The end of the 2024 competitive Pokemon season is upon us, with all that remains being the Pokemon World Championships in Hawaii, so I need to focus up and build something strong. And of course, as you'd expect from somebody as talented and handsome as me, I have absolutely no idea what I'm gonna bring to Worlds. So it's time to find some inspiration. But at the same time, I also need to make a video for you guys, so let's kill two birds with one stone. Today, we're gonna break down the top 10 most winning Pokemon of the 2024 season, discussing what makes them so good, and hopefully giving me an idea of what I want to do with the Pokemon World Championships. We'll be evaluating Pokemon based on how many nationals, internationals, regionals, and special events they've won in 2024, so let's get into it. At number 10 is a Pokemon that is really used to taking the gold, Golden Go. Golden Go is a Pokemon that was frankly very obviously designed to be strong. It's hard to find any flaws in it really. It has one of the best typings in the game, Ghost and Steel, genuinely fantastic special attack and very good bulk. Honestly, its only bad stat is its speed, which is super mediocre. But this has allowed Golden Go to serve as a fast piece on Tailwind teams or as a piece on these slower Trick Room teams, or both. And this is all without mentioning Golden Go's two unique traits that really let it shine. First off is the signature ability, Good as Gold, which makes it immune to status moves. So you can't spore it, thunder wave it, eerie impulse it, or otherwise really mess with it very easily at all. Especially when combined with Golden Go's ghost typing, which makes it immune to the most common non-status move way to disrupt a Pokemon, Fake Out, Golden Go is basically designed for setup. You're not stopping this guy from setting up with Nasty Plot unless you're knocking him out. And once Golden Go's been set up, he's showering you with Make It Rain, a signature move that's 120 base power, steel type spread move. It does have a downside of lowering Golden Go's attack by one stage after it's used, but considering these types of moves are usually reserved for Pokemon like Calyrex Shadow Rider or other legendaries, it's a really small price to pay for something so powerful. Players have been able to use these traits to take the gold with Golden Go over and over again, making it the 10th most winning Pokemon of the 2024 season. At number 9, we have a Pokemon who's a little more straightforward than Golden Go, Chin Pao. This cutesy widow kitty cat is actually very strong. Its ability, Sword of Ruin, reduces the defense of all other Pokemon on the field by 25%, essentially meaning that physical attacks hit 25% harder. Perfect for Chin Pao, who's frail, fast, and hits super hard. While his ice and dark typing really suck defensively, this Pokemon isn't really taking hits without his Focus Sash anyway. And ice and dark are a pretty damn good combination of stab attack types to have. While obviously these traits make Chin Pao a good physical attacker in and of itself, a huge part of its appeal to the 2024 formats has been how it enables other powerful attackers like Dragonite, Hisui, and Arcanine, and Urshifu. Funnily enough, Urshifu Rapid Strike is also a very good counter to Chin Pao, meaning these two kind of have a love-hate relationship. Chin Pao's ability to serve as damage amplification for its partner, while simultaneously being an offensive sweeper in its own right, has earned it the number 9 slot on this list. This next one I'm honestly kind of surprised by. Number 8, Raging Bolt. Now, it's not surprising because this Pokemon is weak, as we're about to get into, the Pokemon is in fact very, very strong. The impressive thing is that Raging Bolt has only been legal for a few months, being a Pokemon that was only released in the Indigo Disc DLC, he wasn't around until around January. But looking at what this guy can do, it makes perfect sense how he was able to accomplish so much in such a short period of time. This year of competitive Pokemon has been full of powerful water types like Iron Bundle, Urshifu, and Ogre Pond, fire types like Ogre Pond, again, <laughs> Incineroar and Arcanine, and grass types like Ogre Pond, <laughs> again, and Rillaboom, all of which Raging Bolt resists with its dragging typing. Honestly, the only Pokemon that really directly threatened Raging Bolt for most of the season were Chin Pao, Landorus, Fluttermane, and Calyrex Ice Rider now. Raging Bolt's typing is great defensively, as we're just talking about, and its frankly fantastic defensive stats really let it take advantage of that defensive typing. And the craziest part is, its defensive stats aren't its most impressive ones. That honor goes with absolutely absurd 137 special attack stat. That's the second highest special attack of any of the Paradox Pokemon, only behind Iron Moth. Kind of like Golden Go, his only real downside is his pretty bad speed, but Raging Bolt makes up for that with its really pushed signature attack, Thunderclap. Thunderclap is basically an electric type special sucker punch, letting Raging Bolt use priority to get around its bad speed stat. But that's still not all its good traits. Raging Bolt has a huge move pool, which makes it a really flexible Pokemon to use. Along with powerful attacking moves like Draco Meteor, Thunderbolt, and Thunderclap to use Raging Bolt as a sweeper, it's also been used as a utility Pokemon, with Electro Web for speed control, Volt Switch to reposition, and Snarl for special attack mitigation. And the crazy thing is, you don't have to pick one or the other. The support of Raging Bolt still does a lot of damage. The more supportive version of Raging Bolt often packs an Assault Vest, while the more offensive ones will use items like Safety Goggles, Booster Energy, or sometimes Life Orb. Many of these different versions of Raging Bolt have won events on teams that are better suited to for one option or the other, allowing it to take the number 8 spot on this list. At number 7, we have a Pokemon that 
anyone that's ever played competitive at any point is familiar with, Amoongus. This little guy could probably be a 30 minute video just by himself, so in a nutshell, Amoongus's base stat total is pretty damn low at only 464, uh, but its stats are exactly where they need to be, with a huge amount of them being in its HP and defenses. Its speed stat is abysmal, but this Pokemon's supporting move pool makes it the perfect slow defensive Pokemon. Rage Powder allows it to redirect opposing attacks, Spore lets it put opposing Pokemon to sleep, and Pollen Puff lets it heal its buddies. Rage Powder is a priority move, so it doesn't really matter that you're slow. It's good to use Spore after your opponent moves, so you have a guaranteed turn where that Pokemon will not move, and Pollen Puff going after you get hit is good, because, you know, you try to heal before you get hit, there's nothing to heal. And the last really strong thing about Amoongus is its ability Regenerator, which heals Amoongus for one-third of its maximum HP whenever it switches out of battle. This gives it a lot of natural synergy with other Pokemon that like to pivot in and out of the battle, like Incineroar, who likes to use Intimidate over and over again, and Pokemon like Scarf Urshifu Rapid Strike, who likes to try and leave the battlefield quickly with U-Turn so it can be safe for later. And while this Pokemon is normally pretty strong, the fact that it can redirect attacks and resist them from some of those powerful Pokemon in the format like Fluttermane, Urshifu Rapid Strike, and Raging Bolt makes it really, really strong. This had a fantastic season this year, showing up on all sorts of different balancey defensive teams. At number six, we have Ogre Pond Wellspring. I've made a whole video about this guy's multiple forms already, and they're all good, but specifically, the water type one has won a whole lot of events this year. This Pokemon has access to follow me, which lets it redirect attacks, and has the ability Water Absorb, makes it immune to water type attacks, crucially moves like Surging Strikes. Combine these two traits with its grass typing, which makes it immune to powder moves like Sleep Powder and Spore, and it's an extremely strong redirector. These attributes make Water Ogre Pond sound like a really strong support Pokemon, and with other moves it can use like Taunt and Encore at its disposal, and it's very, very solid bulk that you can increase by terrestrializing it, uh, which will give it a plus one special defense boost as well. Yeah, it's a really good support of Pokemon. But there's even more to it. This guy also just randomly hits really hard with a base 120 attack and a natural 1.2 times boost to its attack's power. This guy isn't just a supporter, he's also doing huge damage with a signature move, Ivy Cudgel, or one of the 3 million different physical grass type attacks it can choose from. You know, Grassy Glide, Wood Hammer, Horn Leash, Power Whip, ah, they gave him everything. Heck, it can even use Swords Dance if you just want to go full sweeper mode. That's all without mentioning that he also gets an upgraded version of Protect, Spiky Shield. Wellspring Ogre Pond's disgusting amount of flexibility has let it fill gaps and serve different roles on many different teams in the 2024 season, leading it to being one of those winning Pokemon of the year. We're into our top five Pokemon of the year now, and honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if any or all of these Pokemon ended up winning the Pokemon World Championships. So at number five, we have Tornadus Incarnate. Tornadus, as we know it, has gotten so strong because of a mechanics change in Generation 8. In Generations 1 to 7, speed was calculated at the start of the turn. So let's say, for example, Pokemon 1 is faster than Pokemon 2, and Pokemon 2 is faster than Pokemon 3. In Generations 1 through 7, if Pokemon 1 used a move to make Pokemon 2 slower than Pokemon 3, Pokemon 2 would still move before Pokemon 3 that turn. Basically, the game wouldn't realize that who's faster is changed until the start of each turn. But that's not how it works anymore. Now, after every action, who should move next will be adjusted based on speed stats and modifiers. So, after Pokemon 1 uses this move to make Pokemon 2 slower than Pokemon 3, then on that same turn, Pokemon 3 will move before Pokemon 2. This was a huge change, and its whole implication could probably be its own video. But it's also the main reason why Tornadus is so freaking strong in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Tornadus has access to the ability Prankster, which gives plus one priority to all of your status moves, basically making them like Quick Attack. And it has access to the move Tailwind, which doubles the speed of Pokemon on your side of the field for four turns. This is an extremely powerful combo, because you'll be able to take advantage of your partner Pokemon's speed being doubled on the very same turn, regardless of whether Tornadus or your partner Pokemon are naturally faster. This has made Tornadus extremely potent, as it can use Tailwind and make sure its partner, like Urshifu, Kyogre, or Golden Go, get to use their super powerful attacks before the opponent can try and knock them out. But now, this isn't a unique trait of Tornadus. There are other Prankster Tailwind Pokemon, like Murkrow, Talonflame, and Whimsicott, that have all seen an amount of play in Scarlet and Violet, but Murkrow and Talonflame are a little on the lower side of the power level scale, and the only real thing Whimsicott has going for it over Tornadus is that it's slightly faster, is immune to Spore, and has access to another very popular Prankster move, Encore. But the things that makes Tornadus better than all of its alternatives, at least in a vacuum, is that it has better base stats than the others, has an extremely strong stab spread move with Bleak Windstorm, has access to all four weather moves, which allows it to be extremely synergistic with Protosynthesis Pokemon through Sunny Day, or Kyogre and Urshifu Rapid Strike with Rain Dance, and it has access to other unique support moves like Taunt. This combination of traits has been it the best Pokemon to use to pull off a really, really powerful combo, making it the fifth best Pokemon of the season. Next one, I have literally made a whole video about that's probably similar in length to this one. Number four, Incineroar. Incineroar is basically the ultimate support Pokemon. Fire Dark is pretty good defensive typing with only a few weaknesses, it has really solid defensive stats, and an okay attack set of 120. And it has one of the best abilities in the game, Intimidate, which functionally increases the defense stat by dropping opposing Pokemon's attack stats whenever Incineroar switches in. And this Pokemon has a pile of super strong moves
moves to choose from to make sure that it is always supporting your team in the best way possible. Incineroar basically always packs Fake Out, a plus three priority move that can only be used in the first turn a Pokemon is on the field, and forces the Pokemon hit to flinch, basically skipping its turn. It also basically always runs a move that allows it to switch out, either U-turn to do a little damage and switch out, or Parting Shot, which drops the target's attack and special attack before switching Incineroar out. From there, you can choose one or two damaging moves from a list of Knock Off, Flare Blitz, Starkest Lariat, and Snarl, and you can choose up to one other supporting move, like Will-O-Wisp, Taunt, or Helping Hand. Remember when I said it was impressive that Raging Book got 8th since it only came out during the Indigo Disc DLC halfway through the season? Well, the same thing is true for Incineroar, and he took 4th. This is a huge oversimplification of Incineroar, but if you want to know more, check out this video. At number 3, we have the funny monkey, Rillaboom. This Pokemon was my first starter when I got back into the game, and I didn't know it at the time, but this guy is just kind of busted. To start, Rillaboom has some great stats with really good bulk and a respectable attack stat. Nothing crazy in and of itself, but its ability, Grassy Surge, both increases its survivability and damage. When Rillaboom enters the battlefield, it sets Grassy Terrain, which increases how much damage Rillaboom does by boosting the power of its grass-type attacks, and increases Rillaboom and other Pokemon's survivability by healing all the Pokemon on the field by a little bit at the end of each turn. It also just randomly nerfs Earthquake, but that's not why Rillaboom is so strong. Grassy Terrain also buffs the move Grassy Grassy Glide, a relatively strong grass-type attack that becomes a priority move when used in grassy terrain, and surprise surprise, Rillaboom learns this move. On top of all of this, Rillaboom has a pretty great move pool. Woodhammer for a hugely strong grass stab, fake out for, you know, fake out things, see above, you turn to pivot, and access to strong coverage moves like high horse power and knockoff. This combination of traits has let Rillaboom serve a lot of roles on a lot of different teams. It has been used as a choice band, all on offense Pokemon with its extremely strong grassy glides and woodhammers, as a bulky offense Pokemon with Assault Vest to boost its mediocre special defense, and sometimes it splits the difference with the Miracle Seed set, meant to boost damage without the same restrictions of items like Choice Band or Assault Vest, allowing Rillaboom to sometimes run more supportive moves like Taunt. This combination has let Rillaboom often serve as a Grass-type member of the common Firewater Grass core of Incineroar, Rillaboom, and number two on our list, Urshifu Rapid Strike. The only surprising thing about Urshifu Rapid Strike on this list is that it isn't number one, but obviously it's still won a lot of tournaments. Urshifu is another Pokemon that I've made a whole video about on its own, so here it is again, but in a nutshell, Urshifu Rapid Strike has the ability Unseen Fist, which allows its contact moves to hit through Protect. Protect is a key part of competitive Pokemon as an option that allows you to stall out turns for effects that only last a few turns, like Weather or Trick Room, attacks that can only be used on certain turns, like Fake Out, to scout what your opponent's locking into with choice items, to protect one of your Pokemon while you reposition the other one to have a more advantageous position next turn. It's a complicated dance, but I guess Urshifu hates dancing because he takes that layer of complexity completely out of the game. And with its great attack stat, you're hitting them really hard through what would be a protect. So what water type attack is Urshifu using? Liquidation? Waterfall? Wave crash? Oh, you sweet summer child. Urshifu's signature move, Surging Strikes, is a 25 base power water type attack that hits three times and always critically hits. This is functionally approximately 112 base power move, but it's actually better than just a hard-hitting water-type attack. Number one, as a move that hits more than three times, it's one of the few ways to knock out a sturdy or focus sash Pokemon in one hit. And second of all, and more importantly, honestly, uh, critical hits have a few special things about them. Uh, number one, critical hits ignore your attack drops. So if I intimidate you 15 quintillion times with my Incineroar, your surging strikes are still doing as much damage as if I intimidated you zero times. And critical hits ignore defensive boosts from your opponent. Uh, so if I'm behind a Reflect, or if I've clicked Iron Defense six times, your your surging strikes really doesn't care. The only real ways to mitigate surging strikes are things like burn, or friend guard, or if the sun is up, because that'll lower the power of water type moves. So, <laughs> Can you see why this guy's good yet? Urshifu is so generically powerful that its wins this season have been on everything from super offensive teams to balanced teams to hard trick room teams. And the array of items it uses are super, super varied too. Focus Sash so it always lives one hit guaranteed, Choice Scarf to outspeed important threats in the metagame, Mystic Water or Choice Band for extra damage, or even stuff like Safety Goggles to make it good against one of its few good counters, Amoongus. Urshifu only really does the whole hit stuff through Protect thing well, but it turns out basically every team wants to knock out its opponent's Pokemon, uh, and Urshifu is really, really, really good at doing that unless your opponent has extremely specific counterplay, uh, making it the second most winning Pokemon of the 2024 season, only coming in behind number one, Fluttermane. This Ghost and Fairy-type Pokemon has been dominating competitive play since the second that it became legal. Uh, first off, Fluttermane has some of the most optimized stats possible. This guy is supposed to be a fast, frail special attacker. So, Game Freak kind of skimmed, you know, cut off the top uh, on the less important stats like defense, HP, and 
attack, uh, so we could have more stats left over to stuff into those speed, special attack, and special defense. Uh, this guy is quite literally built for his role. These stats let us serve as a really, really strong special sweeper, uh, with powerful stab moves like Shadow Ball, Moonblast, and Dazzling Gleam, and with some good coverage moves, you know, like, uh, like Power Gem and Thunderbolt. Uh, but Fluttermane's uses don't just stop at it doing a crazy amount of damage, uh, it also has a metric ton of support moves it can choose from. I can use Icy Wind or Thunder Wave for speed control, Taunt to disrupt your opponent's non-damaging moves like, say, Trick Group or Spore, Perish Song to create some unlosable game states in the endgame, and this move pool flexibility is just the start, its EVs are also really custom customizable as well. Because Fluttermane is a past Paradox Pokemon, it has Protosynthesis, uh, which means either while the sun is up or once per battle if it's holding the item Booster Energy, you'll get a boost of Fluttermane's highest stat. This has led to a ton of options. Because of its great speed and special attack, you can just dump all your EVs in there and run a boosting item like Choice Specs or Booster Energy to do ridiculous damage with your little glass cannon. You can EV your Fluttermane so that it gets a speed boost from Booster Energy, so you can outspeed Pokemon like Choice Scarf Urshifu or even some Pokemon in Tailwind, uh, and pump the rest of your EVs into bulk so it can be run as a bulky supportive Pokemon with moves like Thunder Wave or Taunt, uh, who also just so happens to get to pack one really powerful move off its really high special attack stat, like a Moonblast or a Shadow Ball or a Dazzling Gleam. You could also run it with a Focus Sash and with Sun Support from Pokemon like Groudon or Torkoal or Coridon, so you can get some even more guaranteed survivability on top of whichever Protosynthesis boost you're going for. I could go on and on. This thing has an extremely customizable move pool, it has extremely customizable stats with lots of different ways it can run its EVs. But the point is, Fluttermane's possibilities are surprisingly diverse, given how simple it seems at first. All this makes it clear why Fluttermane is our winner for the 2024 Pokemon of the Year. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! So, we've run through all the Pokemon, but why did we do this again? Oh, right, 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 Worlds. What is there to take away from all this, besides that I should just shove as many of these Pokemon as possible onto my team? Well, I'd say the theme here is probably flexibility. Even when talking about Pokemon that would seem pretty straightforward on the surface, like Urshifu and Fluttermane, every single one of these Pokemon that I've talked about has had a bunch of different sets that they could and have used to success. So I guess it's important to realize that it's more deep than just going, oh, actually, I need a Fluttermane on my team. It's about figuring out which type of Fluttermane would suit your needs best, what holes do you need filled, and how do you make that Pokemon fill that role. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, but the, uh, I still don't feel ready for worlds.